from Restorative Practices Integration Associates. And I'm here with a friend of mine, Frederick Cooper, my LinkedIn friend, I should say, if I'm being completely authentic. Um, and also just another warrior out here in the community um, pushing this restorative practices, restorative justice work. And um, as you all know, through my website, I'm just trying to uh, create community for myself uh, and for everyone else out here who's doing this work, I think, Frederick, you can probably um, agree that the work that we do at times feels very siloed, right? We're, we're, in, we're in the space, we're supporting people, but we're the ones who are really leading the work um, and pushing the efforts to have our world be more restorative in the way we engage with each other. And so on our website at uh, www rpintegration.org, we have a page called Community Circle. And the intention of that page is to get more people um, involved in the conversation around restorative practices. And as I'm diving deeper into the work and seeing the things that other people are doing it doing around the world, um, you know, it inspired me to reach out and to be more closely in community with people who are doing the similar work that I am and making me feel like, oh, okay, this is actually a movement that we're yeah. having in the world, right? And not just me doing my little piece in my little neck of the woods um, here in, in California. Um, I'm on um, indigenous lands of Miwok. And, uh, and so that's where I'm doing my work. And, and then we have Frederick out in Chicago um, doing his amazing work as well. So I'm really excited to um, have this conversation with you today, Frederick, and to learn more about what you're doing and how our work um, sort of collides with one another. Um, yeah. yeah, to get us started, why don't you just tell us a little bit about your restorative practices journey? What led you to start doing the work that you're doing today? as well oh wow wow it's a it's a heck of a journey uh i actually started restorative justice uh back in 2015 uh i was sitting at home watching uh a series called chicago land and uh it was a gal there named robert spicer that was doing uh doing uh restorative justice and i just thought i just thought this was the best thing since sliced bread so long story short uh i was actually working for uh, a church and they had a, a restorative uh, uh justice training coming up and uh, I was like, oh, wow. He's like, do you want to be a part of it? And I was like, sure. I just seen something on TV about that. And I was like, okay. And, and the trainer was actually Robert Spice, the same guy I seen on the train. Mm -hmm. So it was just an amazing training. So I think I just fell in love with the restorative justice practice and just going through the trainings and everything. So I started off in a school. Uh, it was one of my first places I went to. And, and the kids just loved it. They just loved it. Loved the circles. And they was able to have a voice because uh, where I'm from in Chicago, a lot of us just uh, we don't get hurt, and uh, so that was that was one of the main things, just giving them a voice and just saying, "Hey, y'all can talk how y'all want to talk," you know, in this space. This is our safe space, and so it just went so well. Then a county sheriff invited me to come into Cook County Jail, mm -hmm. which was not on my plans, but mm -hmm. is it? it, it I, I went just to volunteer one time, and then I looked up. I'm doing circles in Cook County Jail for the last seven years. Mm. And so um, came the uh, restorative justice community course came on along in Illinois. And uh, the first one was uh, in the neighborhood of North Lawndale, which I was already working. So by me being a practitioner of restorative justice, they asked me to come over there. And I worked over there for three years, did a lot of great work. A lot of cases were, were able to get dismissed. And um uh, from there, uh, one of the uh, coordinators from the Inglewood Court asked me to come over here in Inglewood. And this is where I've been ever since. So, mm -hmm. lesson to see uh, our, our people get these cases dismissed instead of going that punitive route. So, yeah. it's saying, route do you want to take this restorative route or this punitive route? So, you see this restorative route is saying, hey, we're not excusing the crime. 
But what we're saying is, hey, let me hear you out. Mm -hmm. Judge, you You know, I'm here to hear you out. And so I love that process. And since I've been a part of these uh, restorative courts, I've been able to see over 60 cases dismissed. And so it's it's nothing short of a blessing to me. That's amazing. That's amazing. And I'm wondering, you're saying, you know, the court is saying, let let us hear you out, giving the opportunity to let the people that you're working with, people who have um, had some harm has been done on their part, right? What does that actually mean from the court's perspective? Let us hear you out. And how does it impact uh, their decisions, the, the decision that's made in regards to the, to the um, harm that was caused? Like, how does that actually impact the overall case? So what happens is it starts off, uh, we do what we call a, a pre-circle. It's just, it's just a form just uh, getting to know a person. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're trying to change the projection of the, like I said, the punitive process to the restore. It's more welcoming. It's not saying, hey, you guilty. You did mm-hmm. something. And hey, yeah, you did something. But hey, let's see how we can make this better. Mm-hmm. So, then we do our pre-circle just a few questions and then I say hey after we do our pre-circle with they fill out the form and who close to you reason why we asking all these questions because when we because when we start the circle process we want you to bring in who you feel is going to make you comfortable in this process mm-hmm. so when I always tell them I say hey bring you bring whoever you want to bring family bring your gang bring exactly. whoever will make you comfortable in this process because I'm gonna have team members in this process because we want to make you feel a part of community and so like I say, the, the, the main goal is, like I always tell people, restorative justice for me is building each other. It's all this all is about building each other, building mm-hmm. relationships. I don't know you, you don't know me. And here's the thing. I don't want, and I always, when I start off a circle, especially at the course, I always tell the person, we're not here to please you guilty. Mm-hmm. But saying, hey, here's a few things that you choose uh, for your personal growth that you will do in order to get this case dismissed. Uh, us as a community, we agree on it. We're going to support you in any way you get these things done, cases. Mm-hmm. So how do the judges um, see this program um, impacting the community if all, at all? Are, are there judges who are um, all for it? Um, and then there are judges who are against it. And do you work with the that part of that side of the process to encourage people to try restorative justice more often? Well, I work with the judges. Uh, I work with both judges in the Lawndale Court and the Inglewood Court, and they ha- also have a restorative justice court mm-hmm. in um, Avondale community out here in Chicago. And so I work with all the judges, and I let them know, hey, because, you know, you're going to get your pushback. Mm-hmm. And because, you know, you have judges that are used to doing things their way. Mm-hmm. And so a practitioner of this practice, I have to let them know, hey, restorative justice doesn't work that way. You know, this is this is not because I remember one one of the judges. Well, this is my courtroom. No, it's not. This mm-hmm. is a re- justice community court, and the key word is a community court. And so we have to treat this as community. And so we have to invite the community in, and we have to make these mm-hmm. decisions properly. It's not about you saying he's guilty. He should do this. He should do that. It's not about that. That's not what restorative justice is about. And so yes, you had your pushback in the beginning, but when I met the Inglewood Court, that judge there. Truly amazing. Uh, she's listening. She, uh, you know, I was a head, I'm the head circle keeper over there. So she comes to me before she makes any decisions. Like, what do you think we should do about this? What is, what do you think how this should go? And so we've been able to work together with community. Like I say, over here at the single world court to get over 50 cases dismissed. So I don't, so I don't want a person to partake in this if it's not for them. Right. This, I said it's a bill. Some people don't want to build. You have people that's used to going to the, the criminal system. They, 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 right. That's all. But and like I tell people, this process is for the ones who want to build, who want to see, want a different outcome. It's, Main goal is, especially in our community, is to see our people not have that conviction. Mm-hmm. People of color, we are the ones that have the highest conviction rates. So I love, I love this process because it's helping us to say, hey, here's this young guy. Instead of convicting him, he comes to this process. He gets his uh, repair harm agreement done. His case get dismissed. Not only are we helping them get their case dismissed, but we also guiding them through <clears throat> the expungement process. Mm-hmm. Process get everything, get your arrest record, everything. Exactly. When you so what I've been seeing in this process is some, be some some of our participants say, man, this process here, it made me better. Mm-hmm. It made me open up. I ain't never really sat and talked to people like this. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah, and you know, that's what the circle process is all about. 
it's about, like I say, that building and letting our participants speak what's on their mind because I've, I've been in a circle where uh, a young participant might be like, oh, excuse me. I'm saying, no, uh -huh. it's just your circle. Yeah. You so